What's good guys, welcome back to the channel. So today we're gonna to be running through the continuity of ring final conductors test. Gonna to go through the full process, all the theory as well, and just give you a great insight into this specific test. This test is not the same as R1, R2 testing. That's a separate test in a separate video. I'll link that in the description below so you can go check that out if that's what you're after. Also, if you don't want any of the theory and you just wanna to get to the meat and potatoes, I'll put some timestamps below so you can skip to step one, step two, step three, and just get what you need from this video and then crack on. Let's run the intro and get into this test process. So firstly, this is a dead test, so you need to make sure the installation is isolated. Now on a new installation, this test is actually carried out as part of initial verification, so the installation shouldn't actually be live. However, on a existing installation, you will need to carry out the safe isolation procedure to ensure everything's dead before you start taking things apart and connecting bits together. If you're not sure on the safe isolation process, I've got a link to a single phase safe isolation process, which I'll put in the description below to take you through that process. But whatever you're doing, just make sure you're working safely and make sure that you isolate if you need to. This test can also be influenced by parallel paths. I'll put a link to another video below, which goes through bonding, equipotential and parallels. And once you have a bit of an understanding on those, you can understand how they might influence results and affect your testing process. And you can account for that out in the real world where these things will bring readings down and mess with the numbers. So yeah, check that out if you don't know. If you do know, you should be well aware. But yeah, this test can be influenced by parallel earth paths. So why do we have to do this test and what's involved with the process? Well, regulation 643.2.1 requires that all circuit protective conductors and all earthing for that matter is tested for continuity throughout its entirety. And it also has a specific requirement for ring final circuits that all conductors, including line, neutral and CPC, are tested for continuity end to end to ensure that they're whole. Now, this has led to a three step test being developed Step one is the continuity of the individual conductors. Step two is a figure of eight test between line and neutral. You just take the readings and ensure that it's configured correctly. You don't actually record anything though. And step three is the same as step two, however, it's between line and CPC. And the highest result here is gonna be your R1, R2 and the number that you're looking for to complete the test properly. To conduct this test, you're going to need a low resistance ohmmeter or a multifunction tester configured to this setting. You're going to need to make sure that your leads are nulled as well. So use the null feature of the tester to remove the resistance of the leads. You can also measure the resistance, write it down and remove it from any results uh, you get out in the field if you want to do it that way. But you just need to make sure that, yeah, you're configured right and you're nulled and ready to go. You might want to chuck a screwdriver and a pair of pliers in your pocket as well. You're going to be obviously dismantling and then the ring at the origin but as you find any faults and stuff like that you might want to unscrew a socket unscrew an accessory and rectify it make it better whatever so yeah you don't want to be running backwards and forwards grabbing tools losing track of where you were just chuck these things in your pocket and you uh you should be good to go speaking of tools this video is sponsored by me yes I'm sponsoring myself. I actually have a tool shop which sells all sorts of specialist technicians tools and equipment. So if you're in the market for some hand tools or a tool bag or anything like that, check out Loadout. We've got all the gear and all the idea about what we sell. And yeah, I'm super passionate about it. It's actually probably 50% of my working week as well as being an electrician. So yeah, go check that out if you need any tools. I'm sponsoring today's video. Right, step one, end-to-end -end continuity. So like I said before, you literally wanna get your line, neutral and CPC, both legs of the ring, and just test for continuity between each conductor. So make sure they're whole, end-to-end -end line is cool, end-to-end -end neutral is cool, end-to-end -end CPC is cool. Now the result for line will be your little R1, the result for neutral will be your little Rn, and your result for CPC will be your little R2. These get jotted down on the schedule of test results, in the columns that are titled exactly the same as that and this is step one considered complete. 
Step two is the figure of eight testing for line and neutral. So at the consumer unit, the DB, wherever you're working, at the origin, you're gonna to need to identify the individual legs of the ring. That's super important. You wanna know what's the incoming and outgoing, the one and the two, the A and the B. And you'll want to connect your incoming line with your outgoing neutral and vice versa. And that makes the figure of eight. You will then want to run around all of the accessories on continuity mode and test between line and neutral. The results should be largely the same and you just want to mentally jot this result down. There's no space on the test sheet for it. You can write it on the back, but yeah, the results are just good to reference and check the final step of the test. And they also should indicate whether the ring's been configured correctly or if it hasn't, etc. I'll get more into the readings and the different readings you can get at the end of the video. Step three is exactly the same as step two, however, it's between line and CPC. So figure of eight again, incoming line, outgoing CPC and vice versa. Run around all of the accessories, test in between line and CPC, and the highest result you get here will be your R1 plus R2. That is the test considered complete. You'll jot that result down in the R1, R2 section and you can move on. However, there is so many different readings and results and things you can find. So we'll go back over the steps now and run through some of the things you can expect and not expect to see when doing ring final continuity testing. Let's go back to step one, the end-to-end -end of the individual conductors. Now you're gonna test these and you would expect if all of the conductors were the same size and hopefully the same length because it's a ring that the results would be largely the same so your little r1 your little rn and your little r2 should be the same throughout and one can actually be used to verify the other once you get one it should be the same as the second one and the third one should be the same too so that's a good little trick there to yeah know what to expect however a lot of rings don't have a cpc which is sized the same as line and neutral t and e for instance used widely throughout domestic installations is going to mean that most domestic rings do not have the, the same size CPC as line and neutral. So that means that that's actually going to be a higher resistance due to the lower sized cable, but there is actually an equation that should allow you to work out the expected result for that too. Now there's a multiplier for all cables, but specifically the one for 2.5 and 1.5 earth is 1.67. So you could get your R1, get your RN, and then you could multiply those values by 1.67. That will give you an expected result for R2. You can then carry out that part of the test and verify that. Of course, if they're all the same size, then they should be the same. But if they're not, then yeah, you can just use that equation. The full equation is also in GN3, so you can take a look at that if you wanted to work out the multipliers for four mil, six mil, or I don't know, <laughs> whatever crazy ring you're trying, to, you're trying to work out. But yeah, the equation's there, so use it if you need it. Now you know what results you should be expecting, I can start talking about the weird and wonderful results. So a higher than expected resistance to me would say that there's a you know, high resistance joint somewhere, so a poor connection, whether it's in a terminal, in a bit of you know, factory made equipment or something like that, or there's some damage to the cable itself. It's been crushed or you know, it's been squished somewhere, it's been damaged, and that is uh, yeah, raising that resistance and messing with the values. Of course, if you get no continuity, then that means you've got no continuity. So that would suggest that you know, someone's missed out on accessory, someone's messed with the ring on, a, on an existing installation, and for whatever reason, you're not getting your end-to-ends, that's obviously you know, bad. You can't, um, you can't leave the circuit like that, so you'll need to investigate that too and find that break whatever may have caused it. A lower than expected resistance would suggest that the ring's configured incorrectly. So you've got a ring within a, within a larger ring, which is effectively creating a, a parallel path. Um, and also speaking of parallel paths, a lower than expected reading may be being pulled down by your parallels. You know, if all the sockets are connected to a conduit system, which is connected to tray, which is connected to, you know, the steel work, which is also bonded, there's gonna be loads of parallels there messing with your results, messing with your ring content. So you can try and remove them where, where practicable, but if not, you have to jot a note on the certificate and let the client know that, yeah, the results have been heavily influenced by some parallel paths. 
Step two, the R1, RN testing, the figure of eight testing, is actually quite simple when it comes to the results and the expected results. First of all, you've configured it in a figure of eight. You've effectively equalized the, the balance of the ring. So when you run around and test for continuity after forming that figure of eight, the results should be largely the same. You know, by a couple of points, they might differ, but they should be the same. So nice and easy to remember. Also, any high or low resistances or any problematic readings should have been flushed out by step one. So you shouldn't come across any of those because yeah, you probably would have found them at step one, rectified them and then moved on. So it should be sweet there. If you're wondering what results to expect, you can actually add your little R1 and your little RN together and then divide that value by four and that should give you an example reading that you can then expect as you run around all of the accessories and test for your, your R1 plus RN. Now, like I said, this result is just used to determine whether the ring's been configured correctly and flag up any weird readings. You could, of course, write it on the back of the certificate. However, it's not actually required to uh, yeah, satisfy the schedule of test results. It's good to hang on to this value though, as you can use it to prove the results for step three of the testing process. Speaking of step three, the results can differ dependent on the way the ring's configured, and more importantly, the size of the CPC. I'll start with the simple part. Um, if you have a same size CPC as your line of neutral, then the results should be largely the same as you make your way around the circuit, the same as step two, and the results themselves should actually be the same as step two as well, because it's essentially the same test, just between different conductors. Again, you can add your little R1 and your little R2 together, divide by four, and that will give you an expected reading to look out for as you make your way around the circuit. But you probably would have verified that already by uh, step two. And yeah, super simple. You can jot the highest result down as your R1 plus R2. Now, if you have a different size CPC and more than likely a smaller one, there's going to be a higher resistance there. So that's actually going to cause the results to fluctuate as you make your way around the circuit. So when you figure of eighted and you're going around all of the accessories, you'd expect a result to slowly get higher as you make your way towards the midpoint of the circuit. And then it would slowly get lower again as you make your way back to the origin again. Now, if you knew exactly where the midpoint of the circuit was, you could actually do that equation again. So little r1 plus little r2 divided by four to get an example result. And that result would be what you would expect to see in the middle of the circuit. Now, generally on most existing installs and most new ones, you're not gonna know exactly where the middle of the circuit is to millimeter accuracy. However, it's a good thing to know if you do know that. And also for any designers out there, they'll be able to use that information to help installers, help testers find these results and verify them. So quite a cool thing to remember. Now, regardless of whether the CPC is the same or a different size, you can still get higher or low resistances again at step three. Now, I'd be surprised if these faults weren't sort of, you know, flushed out in the wash from step one or step two. To be honest with you, it'd be highly unlikely that there's still anything present if you've gone through those stages of the test and rectified as you've gone on. But if there is a high resistance at this stage, it would generally, again, be, be a poor connection, damage to a cable, and you may also so just be testing a spur. So don't forget, if it's a spur for ring, it's gonna be a high resistance because it's spurred off of the ring with a single cable. So yeah, take that into account and think about that when testing. You may also get a lower resistance. So this again could be a ring within a ring, which probably would have been flushed out at an earlier stage. But more than likely when it comes to R1, R2 testing on rings, if you have a lower than expected resistance, it's probably those parallel paths again. You know, that's still conduit or metal trunking or whatever all interconnected to the steel work of the building, all bonded, that's gonna, again, produce parallel paths. And of course, when you're testing, it might take a shorter route, it might bring those values down. So again, try and negate them, try and remove them, but if you can't, just put a note on the certificate and make the client and the contractor aware that you're, uh, you're struggling to get the true value due to these parallel paths. Regardless of whether it's a spur or not, the highest result is your R1, R2. So you can jot that down on the certificate and that is the test considered complete. <sighs>
that is it. I think that's it. I'm pretty sure that's it. <laughs> um, yeah, that, that, that is it. If you want to know more and get more into the theory of this, then uh, yeah, check out GN3. There's loads of useful information on all testing, but specifically this test. They've got a table as well for if the CPC is a different size, there's a table of like expected results for different cables. So like four mil rings and the length of them and all that sort of stuff. So super handy if you're trying to get your head around what the results should be and maybe there's some parallels or something else affecting that so yeah go check that table out i think it's table 2.8 in gm3 i don't know it's also in the on-site guide i don't know what it's called in there but yeah go uh, go check that out if you need to and just check out gm3 in general loads of useful information in there it breaks it down with pictures and everything like that so it's just super handy for learners and people trying to get their head around testing speaking of getting your head around testing um, i'm going to be continuing on with all of the different test processes hopefully these videos are helpful i know they're not like you know my most watched videos but I really enjoy making them and I really enjoy helping you guys. The feedback's amazing. Um, so yeah, hopefully you're getting some value from it too. As always, thanks for watching. I'll catch you guys on the next one. <laughs>